Hey guys, I'm Mel, and today I'm going to recommend some Latin American boots. So if you don't know, I'm from Argentina. So I've read a few Latin American books in my life, and even though I don't read them as often anymore, I've read a lot of them during my first years of discovering how much I love reading. So I saw that a lot of you wanted to make a goal for this year to read more books outside of where you live. And I thought it was my job as a Latin American girl to give you some recommendations of amazing books that you can read to fulfill that goal or even to read books that are really great but I wanted to give you my perspective as well of really famous books and I wanted to include some that are not that well known as well so the first one it couldn't be other than 100 years of solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez and this tells the story of several generations of a family this is magical realism so a lot of weird things happen in this beautiful but so ridiculous town that is called Macondo when you see its story you can feel Latin America in the background you can see Latin American history behind Macondo's history. Gabriel García Márquez is one of my favorite authors because he writes with such care, with such honesty and such gorgeous descriptions. And then you can't help but fall in love with the characters and the world, even though they are absolutely crazy and don't make any sense. I also wanted to recommend from him of Love and Other Demons. This is one I don't see a lot mentioned, but it's one of my favorites by him. This is unsettling since it tells the story of a priest who is also a pedophile. So it might be a little bit heavy to read, but his writing is so magical that it feels like you're suspended in air. The thing is that when you read his book, you have to be open to full descriptions and metaphors and bold statements. Then I want to recommend The Kiss of the Spider Woman by Manuel Puig. This is about two prisoners in their cell who tell stories to each other. You can tell when you're reading this that both characters hold the world inside them. They are so deep and human that is almost difficult to read. So these are stories within stories and in the background it tells the story of an awful time in Argentina. Another famous book that I want to recommend is The House of Spirits by Isabel Allende. This is very similar to A Hundred Years of Solitude in a way that tells the story of several generations of women. This book is also very important to understand Latin American history and is coated with magical and surreal elements. This is the perfect historical fiction book that is set on a modern era. In its core you can feel Chile's identity and culture. From Isabel Allende, who might be my favorite Latin American writer, I also recommend Eva Luna of Love and Shadow and City of Peace. The fifth one is The City and the Dogs by Mario Vargas Llosa. It's about young men who are educated in a military school. They have to learn how to survive in that violent environment full of racial prejudices and the only way to get out might be breaking the rules, which is against everything they are taught. When I read this book for the first time, it marked me. It's full of raw descriptions and characters that lose their humanity in order to live. This is a very intelligent and beautifully made book. Then another book is The Tunnel by Ernesto Sabato. This is a short story about a painter who becomes obsessed with this young woman who admires one of his paintings. It's a very existential book that is mostly an internal journey. This is definitely a story that when you pick it up, you can't put it down until you finish it. The final book I want to recommend is Like Water for Chocolate by Laura Esquivel. I want to recommend it because it's very charming. It's very easy to read. It tells the story of a family in Mexico and a girl who every time she cooks, she can pour her feelings into the food. And whatever she's feeling, the people who eat that food can feel. And she's told by Mexican tradition that she can't get married. But she falls in love with this guy who later marry her sister. If you don't read it for the romance or for the plot, you have to read it for the food recipes. Laura Esquivel can really write descriptions of food. Like it makes you want to eat everything even though they wouldn't sound appealing anywhere else. You have to be open to magical realism to like this. Honestly, if you're going to read magical realism, and especially Latin American magical realism, you have to be open to, to things that don't make sense in a physical sense, but 
that makes sense in that world. So you have to be very into the world and the words and the characters and the plot to really get the full experience. So I would say that if you're going to read Latin American books, you have to be open to reading about families, to reading about Latin American history and to read magical realism, but really well done. Hope you decide to read one of these books and if you do, please let me know. Also let me know if you've read any other Latin American books or if you're planning to. And yeah, that was everything for today. Hope you like this, if you subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye!